as soon as you are providing intermediary service for, for crypto exchange, right. then you have to be registered anyway, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. But, but, and he, that is the big but, um, <laughs> on, only, only if you are a person, you have to register with the FSA. So if you, if you have a piece of software which is sitting uh, on, on the blockchain, which is not controlled by anyone, uh, then it's just a piece of software and uh, financial regulations don't deal with software. They, they deal with companies, they deal with individuals. So only as an individual or company, you have to register, but you cannot register a piece of software. You are comparing centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges and uh, how they can be regulated by looking at their regulated activities. Could you explain again how centralized exchanges engage in uh, regulated activities? All the registered exchanges in Japan are actually centralized exchanges. So if you want to trade on these exchanges, you have to transfer your money or your crypto funds to the exchange. Um, and the cryptocurrency exchange will, will just keep it and manage it for you. So you are losing control over your funds. The private keys are, are with the exchange. Then the trading occurs on order books and uh, they use uh, proprietary uh, matching engines, uh, which allow you to trade with other market participants on, on the markets. If you take a look at the regulations now, you will see that two activities are actually regulated. Mm -hmm. So the first activity which is regulated is uh, managing the funds for others. Um, so the custody part and uh, then the other part which is regulated is uh, actually providing the exchange services so um, the intermediary services for the exchange of crypto assets. What kind of regulated activities decentralized exchanges may do and uh, how is that different from the case of centralized exchanges? Right so if you, if you take a look at um, decentralized exchanges um, actually they have a very similar well, infrastructure, or they, they use the same components uh, as uh, centralized exchanges to some extent. So they uh, have an order book and a matching engine, uh, which is used to exchange crypto assets. So it's an intermediary service, uh, which is regulated. And some of them uh, ask you to transfer your funds to a smart contract, not to, to an account which is controlled by them, but to a smart contract. Um, other exchanges might allow you to trade from your own wallet. So um, the custody part is different from, from the centralized exchanges. So usually the idea of uh, decentralized exchanges is uh, to allow the user to control his own, uh, own funds at any time. If you, if you take a look at the order book and matching engine, uh, sometimes it's maintained uh, off-chain. Um, so there's a company which is running it uh, on its own servers or in the cloud. And sometimes uh, the matching engine and the order book is maintained on-chain. If the DEX is uh, actually using smart contracts, uh, which are controlling the funds of the user, uh, you, you have to take a closer look for, uh, at the design and, uh, of the smart contract. So if there are admin rights uh, of the developer, uh, which allows the developer to transfer the funds at, at some point, then he's controlling the funds and then he's providing custody services, uh, which are regulated again. And if the admin rights do not allow him to change the smart contract or to modify it or to transfer the funds, um, then it's possible that this one is not a custody service, so not a regulated service on the pay, uh, under the Payment Service Act. So it, you, you really have to take a look at, at the tech. I, I think it's very important to work with, uh, well, technology companies in this area, because as a lawyer, you understand the technology, you, to some extent, you, you understand the architecture, but you do not necessarily understand the details of, of the smart contract. So it's very important to understand the mechanics of the smart contract and uh, the extent of uh, the developer has control over the smart contract. As soon as you are providing intermediary service for, for crypto exchange, right. then you have to be registered anyway, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. But, but, and he, that is the big but, um, <laughs> on, only, only if you are a person, you have to register with the FSA. So if you, if you have a piece of software which is sitting uh, on, on the blockchain, which is not controlled by anyone, uh, then it's just a piece of software and uh, financial regulations don't deal with software. They, they deal with companies, they deal with individuals. So only as an individual or company, you have to register, but you cannot register a piece of software. And th this is uh, very interesting for, for the DeFi part um, because uh, for fully decentralized projects, um, th th there might be no way to apply um, regulations. I'm sure the, the, the regulator has... Um, 
uh, is looking for ways uh, to deal with it. But if you take a look at the regulations in general, uh, you, you need a person, a company, or an individual um, to, to register. Developer is not is also not the target of the regulation in this case. So yeah, th th that is our interpretation, right? So um, it is it is our understanding that the developer of the smart contract, if he doesn't retain any control over the smart contract, is a um, MERS software provider. And the software providers are not the target of the regulations. So if you open a uh, GUI, uh, the, the user interface for, for people to interact with the protocol, mm -hmm. um, then you might be subject to regulations because you're, you're more or less providing the market or you, you're making the market available. But this one hasn't been discussed in, in detail by, by the regulator. So um, a different understanding might, might be possible. How about this case? So uh, uh, you start with centralized exchange and gradually losing control uh, over ES and then become fully decentralized exchange. So from our point of view, um, the, the regulations are always taking a snapshot, right? So they are taking a look at um, what is happening now. So um, if, you're, if you're regulated now, uh, you have to register. If, you, if you're not regulated uh, because uh, your, your project is fully decentralized, you don't have to register. So I think it's very similar to uh, what the SEC is doing in, in the US uh, to, to the securities. So at some point, uh, the security might turn into something which is not regulated by uh, the Securities Act anymore. And I think the, the approach should be uh, very similar for, for exchanges um, or for, for software companies providing services in Japan. Um, they might become a non-regulated entity at some point. Um, but since they've provided some exchange services in the past, they might still face some, some uh, precautions by, from, from the FSA. So th those who write law, the Payment Services Act, did they use those words intentionally? Yeah, I, I think they didn't expect. So it has always been the, the person who has been regulated. And the other question you have to ask yourself uh, is whether you want to regulate uh, software developers, right? So the second you start regulating software developers, I think you you really stop innovation because people are worried about the regulation too much and they are not not doing what they would be able to do uh, because they worry about the regulatory risk and penalties and these things. So I don't think the regulator or the, the legislator really wants to regulate uh, software developers. Basically, users don't have to be worried about uh, being regulated, but they should be careful about the risk, of course. The regulated services are not provided by the user, so the user is just um, well consuming or using the, the services or the exchange services. So uh, users are actually free to use DEX or other DeFi protocols. Th this is very important because I, I think there's a big misunderstanding. Um, many people are wondering whether DeFi is regulated, and you should actually ask this question, but the user is never subject to regulation, to financial regulation. Meaning it's risky, but even if they use unregulated uh, DeFi exchange, they are not going to be regulated. Yes, so it's... Um, it's, it's a concept of uh, do, do your own research, right? Of course, there, there might be risks. Uh, some of the protocols are, the, the smart contracts are audited nowadays, um, and some and not all of them were actually audited. So there was a high smart contract risk. Uh, sometimes the teams are anonymous, so you don't know who's the founder of the team. And uh, we, we've seen it for SushiSwap, for example. So if you use these exchanges, you, you should do your research on the exchange. Uh, the yield might be high or you, you will have additional benefits from using these services. Um, but there are definitely some risks involved. And I'm very sure the, the regulator cannot help you in case you lose your money because, um, well, these projects are either offshore or not even, you cannot even identify the, the persons behind them. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.